Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, my lovely warriors. Good evening, students. Good evening, parents. Good evening, everyone who would love to explore certain opportunities out of our country. And trust me, it always helps to know what kind of opportunities lie in different parts of the world. And for all you know, it might just work out. It could be a backup or for some reason, it could be your primary option. So all of this in today's session, and we are going to talk more about the UAE, the United Arab Emirates opportunities for all the Indians out here who would love to explore what kind of colleges, what's the lifestyle like, and what kind of, you know, uh, opportunities and, uh, you know, career perks can I get in UAE. Hello, Blessy, Sugendan, Ishika, Anket, Niza. Hello, good evening, and um, lo my lovely warriors, today's session is going to be really exciting. Trust me, there are some very interesting facts and also some myths which would be bursted. Many of you have certain ideas about UAE. Many of you do not know about it, and you will be also surprised to know a few things today. So, guess what? Uh, you know, I have the statistics right over here. What is the most popular destination of Indian students who want to go and study abroad? Thank you, Ishika, so much. All right. Let's see. Hi, Tamil. Hi, Shlok. Hi, Jinsi. What's the most popular destination? What do you guess? Okay, let's see. Okay, many of you are saying US. Many of you are saying Canada. Many of you are saying Dubai or UAE. Okay, let me just show it to you. My blessings are always with you, Ishika. So, UAE is the top ranked country and it is followed by Canada, US, Australia and Saudi. And if you guys want me to make more sessions, maybe on Canada and US too, do let me know in the comment section after the video ends. I'll make, you know, all the uh, sessions needed and I'll provide you with all the information that is needed to get into these countries. But today's session is all about UAE. It's a huge percentage of the students who visit UAE and who study in UAE and who, you know, settle in UAE too. So those of you who do not know me, my name is Shreyas and I'm the physics master teacher. I have been training kids in offline, uh, in all the, you know, popular names that you can think of for a very long time. I have also graduated from NIT Nagpur and then I did my research in IIT Bombay. Many of my kids are not just in India, but even abroad. And those of you in India, they are doing extremely well in the top-notch IITs, in top-notch, you know, NITs doing really well in their careers. And many of my students also stay in touch even after going abroad or even when, you know, they do something really good in life and, you know, whenever they are down too. And I'm really happy to share all that knowledge and experience that I have gained over the past few years with all of you. So let's get started and let's not waste any time. And yes, all I need is a small like and also hit the subscribe button. If you're not yet joined V Enthuse, V Enthuse is a dedicated English medium channel for all the students in our country and even abroad. So we are not just restricted to India, we are open to and we welcome all students. We had students from Australia, we have students from UAE, we have students from Nepal. And if you are outside India and watching this video, do let me know in the comment section or in the chat section. Okay, I'll be telling you everything, Jinsi. Don't worry about it. Wanna come, Suresh? Okay, so how far is UAE? And where is UAE roughly on the map in case you haven't explored? So UAE is on the western side of India after you cross the Arabian Sea. It takes around two to three hours by flight. Uh, if you try to swim, it might take a couple of days. So I don't know of many people who have swam, so I cannot give you the right estimate, but yes. Uh, and the flights are pretty cheap too. It's not very costly. In fact, if you, even if you take a flight from Chennai to uh, Delhi, right, it's more than three hours. But if you go from Bangalore to, let's say, uh, Abu Dhabi or Dubai, it's hardly two and a half hours or so. So it's crazy. It's not very far away. And um, uh, you will see this. This is the Gulf. Uh, and this is where you have all the major ports and the cities located in UAE. Now, UAE is a very beautiful country in its own. Uh, they have developed 
in the last few decades, uh, you know, and they have not just survived on oil, but they have also made it into a popular tourist as well as education hub. So many top-notch companies, so many top-notch industries, uh, so many universities, education institutes, so many of them have started establishing and, you know, putting their footprint out there. It's really, really nice to even go there for a vacation. I recently went to Dubai uh, for my vacation and trust me guys, uh, you know, it's nothing like what I had expected it to be. Usually people think that it's a very conservative country, uh, you know, there are so many restrictions, but it's not anything of that sort. It's very friendly, people are very, very friendly, they are very open-minded and, you know, there are a lot of opportunities for different kinds of people out there. Not just for engineers, but even for medical students, even for, you know, any kind of other students too. Now, UAE is basically United Arab Emirates. It's like a country, but it's a collection of emirates. Emirates, you can think of it like an equivalent of state in India, or we can think of like how United States of America is, all right? So there are these Emirates. Abu Dhabi is the capital. Dubai is not the capital. Be careful, okay? And uh, there are many more Emirates which are very popular like Ajman, Dubai, Fujara, Ras Al Haima, Sharjah, and Umm Al Quwain. So these are the different Emirates which form UAE. The most popular ones obviously are Abu Dhabi and Dubai where most of the business and tourist, uh, you know, attractions are. Now, if you talk about the reasons, the reasons why, uh, you know, people prefer UAE is, I'll give you like five to six pointers, which will probably help you decide whether you want to go to UAE. One is the academic excellence and, you know, the kind of quality education that you get in UAE. Also, the visa policies, which are very friendly and also flexible. Also the research and development facilities, the scientists, the professors are, you know, from different parts of the world who have very good credible research and lot of, you know, innovations which are going on in Dubai. In fact, so many, uh, you know, uh, you can see the construction, so many, you know, developments always come first to Dubai. Like you might have heard about the Dubai Expo. How many of you have heard about Dubai Expo? Thank you, Hari V and Thews. Yes, Siva, we are going to talk about IIT and UAE too. Yep. So I will talk about Akash. Well, there's requirements for getting a seat into UAE. So, you know, Dubai Expo always has the latest technologies, which probably don't even come to many parts of the world. They are first showcased in the Dubai Expo. And, uh, you know, there are festivals, carnivals, which go on year over year. Many countries, uh, you know, they come together, they showcase their technologies in all these exhibitions. Uh, obviously, the auto expos and all the other things are very famous, world famous in uh, UAE. Also, the opportunities because, you know, it's not just about oil or it's not just about tourism, but there are so many people, uh, business people who, uh, you know, conglomerate in UAE and they exchange ideas. There are so many things that go on. Uh, on different fronts, which makes UAE really the central hub for the world. It's a land of opportunities and, you know, the lifestyle. And let's talk about our lifestyle because not many people know about the lifestyle of UAE. Uh, many students uh, and many parents and many people have, you know, that perception that UAE is very restricted. But uh, trust me, I have been in UAE recently and I have spent a lot of time out there. So I know how it is like. It's nothing like what you would expect it to be. It's much better, in fact, uh, you know, than what you would probably think of it. The people are very, very friendly. The people are also uh, from diverse cultures uh, and also they are all very open-minded. They respect each other. And also, you know, there are not much restrictions as such. As such as compared to other Arab countries. And you will see so many different cultures, so many different uh, ethnicities, so many different uh, people from different countries and states, you know, settling down over there because they like the culture, be it food, be it the festivals. 
I went in Diwali and I could see the streets lit up with you know the lights with diyas and so on and so forth during Christmas it is lit you know so many festivals are celebrated together and they all live in harmony and that's what UAE is proud about yep so the life is very good the standard of living is very high you got very good transportation facilities you got very good road facilities you have very good houses all kinds of latest cars gadgets you know all kinds of markets whatever you think of is there and you know you might have heard about uh, many people going to dubai for shopping how many of you yeah many people are asking sir what about water uh, guess what dubai and uae basically they desalinate the sea water they have a huge desalination plant and they desalinate the water from the sea and see the water is almost like infinite and they supply it to the households and if needed they also import water from neighboring countries like india and all of that yes i'm coming to the fees as well and yes the petrol prices are very low and uh, not just that gold is cheap not just that many goods do not even have much of taxes the taxes are very low over there so it's considered to be more like a tax haven for many individuals it's crazy yeah iphones are cheaper too not just iphones almost all the electronic gadgets are way cheaper than what it is in india because the taxes are way low uh, the reason why this is is because uh, the government uh, you know all the sheikhs they want people to settle down in ua that's the reason why they are you know reducing or they have a lot of uh, barriers in terms of taxes so a uh, lot of entertainment places too uh, you know there is this uh, ferrari world there are water parks there are so many amusement parks there are so many uh, things to do in uae as well you will never get bored of you know uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, things that are there to do in uh, uae or all these places uh, camel rides of course the safaris the desert safaris so many amazing things you can stay in a tent in the desert and all of that so a lot of things are there you will definitely not get bored obviously in dubai okay great so uh, it's your personal uh, preference bunu i will give you both the things pros and cons as well now how do you exactly enter dubai it's not like you just walk in right through a gate so there will be some entrances there will be some eligibilities you will have to do uh, uh, complete uh, complete your graduation and then get a job out there so just to talk about the kind of students and the kind of uh, crowd that is there in UAE you will see most of the crowd studying in the, uh, the uh, sorry UAE is indian look at this most of the students studying in UAE are indian very few emirati students actually study in UAE itself okay because there are a lot of people who have come from other countries obviously you have other uh, country students as well like from egypt bangladesh pakistan philippines and you know other countries uh, which are neighboring uae yeah so this is the general uh, trend now why am i showing you this graph uh, probably because you will feel at home when you have so many indians out there so you will not feel like a complete foreigner you will definitely have friends from all uh, states in uh, uae of course now talking about what are the different colleges are you guys excited to know about the top colleges for indians and if you are go ahead smash the like button number 1 number 2 go ahead put up a fire symbol in the chat box so that i know you guys are interested all right now all kinds of branches are there be it electronics and computer science telecommunication instrumentation mechanical robotics aerospace chemical engineering uh you know artificial intelligence you want to do some major in that all kinds of branches are available in most of these universities which i'm going to give you obviously when we talk about ua we should start with bits uh, goa campus the bits pilani goa campus now remember the bits pilani no oh, sorry bits pilani dubai campus the bits pilani dubai campus admissions do not happen via the bits sat there is a separate test that you need to give that's toefl and alts so i l t s and t o e f l these are the two exams that you need to give to you know enter into most of the colleges and universities in ua 
or even abroad, be it Singapore and you know other countries like US as well. So the thing is, these exams are primarily based on aptitude and English. So if you are above decent in English and you are decent in aptitude, most likely you will get through. And yes, you need minimum percentages in your boards. More often it is 55. Sometimes it is also 75% in your board's examination. So it depends from university to university. Now for your benefit, what I have done is, when you click on this link over here, you, this PDF will be available for you guys to download. So what will happen is, you will be redirected directly to the website. See, look over here. You will be directly redirected to the website of that particular college. So that's what I have done. So when you download the PDF from our Telegram channel, you will be able to see all the details of admission, eligibility criteria, etc. Fee structure, admission procedure. Okay, let's just get rid of this. Scholarships, the dates to apply, everything. So all of this is available. I have kept it just for you. All right. I hope you love this way of presentation. All right. Great. Amazing. So WITS is obviously reputed. It has a very good name. It's one of the best private universities that you can think of. Then you also have the United Arab Emirates University. Uh, so it has a requirement of IELTS score of at least 5.5. Usually you get 5.5 and TOEFL IBT score of 70. Now, again, even if you click on this link out here, this will open up uh, the university page. Okay, you can see that. Yep, let me just click it. Yes, there you go. It will open up the university page. You can see, you can apply. You can see what kind of services are available. You can get everything. The graduate admissions and the undergraduate admissions, everything. All the details are mentioned right over here. You can see the same details, what I told you, okay? Uh, the entire procedure, the fees, the login information, everything. You can just start applying right through this website. So I've kept all these links for you. So all you need to do is make sure that you uh, join our telegram channel and in the telegram channel there will be a PDF after some time it will be uploaded and click on the links so just you have to click on the college it will open up and redirect you over there okay I'll talk about the budget and the placements as well the next college that you should be interested in is the University of Birmingham in Dubai and it has a IELTS requirement of 6 and TOEFL requirement of 80 and there is PT, which is a Pearson's, uh, you know, examination. Uh, that's around 51. So that's another requirement which can be there. But some of the times you might be able to get rid of that. Uh, you, it depends from college to college, which examinations are needed, which examinations are not needed. It's not like one standard examination for all the colleges. But yes, IELTS and TOEFL are these standard examinations some colleges may have some additional requirement is that okay my warriors okay then you also have manipal institute which is there manipal institute which is there in dubai so you might have heard about manipal institute which is there in karnataka in india so similar the same management is also expanded in dubai for that you know they accept the ielts score and the state board criteria is just 55%, which I'm pretty sure is very easy to crack. Okay, so the government college, okay, it's not entirely like India, Abhishek. You can see this United Arab Emirates University, these are, you know, funded by government and all of that. So uh, don't expect uh, IIT like, uh, you know, a structure and NITs and all those things in all other countries. Not many countries have those kind of structures like how it is there in India too. Now, you might have also heard about uh, IIT in Dubai, uh, you know, a recent, uh, uh, you know, agreement between the two countries, India and UAE, of course, uh, where India decided that, yes, we are going to also expand beyond India and we are going to set up the first IIT in UAE. So, when will this happen? That's not sure. Nobody knows. But obviously, it's going to take some time. It might take two years or three years. For all you know, they might you know, follow the model where, you know, they set up their campus in one of the colleges and slowly they turn it into IITs, uh, like how it has been done in the recent years. So that is also possible. Okay, so don't uh, put all your money on or don't, uh, yeah, 
think uh, that you know you're going to have IIT in UAE probably just next year that's not possible it's going to take some time but if you are in eighth or seventh standard then probably by the time you come to uh, you know 12th standard or probably you know you should have IIT in UAE of course so if you have your younger brothers and sisters probably you should uh, let them know okay you know you can also explore opportunities abroad and who knows by that time there might be even more IITs abroad maybe in Singapore maybe in US maybe in Canada Europe who knows yeah so that's that's how it is hi Asam welcome welcome aboard bacha now if I talk about what's the average tuition fees this is very important slide the average fees per year in UAE for almost all the colleges or the top colleges will be somewhere close to 13 to 14 lakhs that's just the fees for the college so you need to keep aside 13 to 14 lakhs and you need to spend around you know uh, 5 lakhs let's say for staying that's that's the amount that you need to spend now basically that means you need to keep aside 50 60 lakhs for studying in UAE that's the amount that you need to yeah spend then you'll be like sir it is a lot yes bacha UAE is a very uh, developed country it has very high standards of living and uh, so that's the reason why the colleges are very expensive out there so these are the average TOEFL and IELTS score which is required so TOEFL score is around 69-70 so anything about 75 or something is a safe score IELTS score 5.5 so keep it about six you are in the safe zone yeah now hold on don't say oh my god I will tell you some good news I know you're shocked by the price of the living expenses and the college fees and you'll be like sir now India is so good I don't mind buying that cheap crash course which you offer for 6500 bucks and I can just go into some IIT or NIT and you know I can just uh, finish my graduation and I can also enjoy my life uh, probably not even this price within this price I will finish all my expenses in India yes true very true I mean I when I did my engineering I completed my entire engineering in one and a half lakh including the hostel fees mess food everything one and a half lakh and I was done okay so that's the advantage obviously of uh, you know studying in India versus studying abroad but yes then you'll be like sir what is the advantage okay I spent so much what's the advantage okay don't worry I'll tell you about that but also let me tell you there are these scholarship programs which will help you assist you you know in getting admission into these colleges they will pay partly or fully uh, of your uh, tuition fees so these are the scholarship exam uh, scholarship uh, you know programs which are available now these links are also clickable so if you click on this link it's going to open up the scholarship admission page okay so all these links are clickable all the eligibility criteria is how to apply and how to inquire all these details are mentioned so these are the best scholarship programs for all of you if you want to go to UAE so that way you won't have to spend so much maybe 50% 60% will be waived off just because of the scholarship and if your uh, resume if your if your you know uh, qualifications are really good then probably 100% too so that's what it is yeah now what about the visa the visa cost will be around you know 40 to 60 thousand rupees well they use dirhams over there so that's around 2 to 3 thousand Arab Demirati uh, okay so basically you know flight charges and all of that if you take into account roughly you should put 1 lakh just for going over there and the visa and all those things and if you have not yet applied for passport it's a good time you start applying for your passport because you need to have with at least six months of validity in it and then it must also have uh, uh, upon arrival the passport copies with entry visa to the UAE is required evidence of acceptance letter the acceptance letter is required also the bank statements are required to show that yes you have enough funds when you're entering UAE or else you might just enter UAE and you know you you might just raise your hands and say like oh I don't have money now what do you do you please take care of me no that's, that's something which they don't allow and also your tuition fee receipt that you have already paid the fees of the college and all of these are the minimal requirements for you to get a student visa uh, in UAE now this is the most interesting part this is where your eyes will open up okay now the cost of living okay uh, like I just told you it's very costly out there and the number two problem 
in UAE is that when you are a student, the labor laws do not allow you to do part-time jobs. If you know in US, Canada, Europe and all these countries, you can do part-time jobs, you can be a research assistant, you can be a teacher's assistant and you can earn money while you are studying. And many students do that. Many of my friends, many of my cousins have been doing part-time jobs. But in UAE, as per the labor laws, it is not allowed. So that means you need to have very good funding. You need to have a lot of backup or you need to have a very good loan or you need to have very good scholarship if you want to enter UAE. But this is the best part. The compensation, the average salary when you graduate makes up for everything. Look at this. Look at this. The average salary of an engineer is 1,84,000 rupees per month. I'm not talking per year, per month. Not just that, it's also possible that most of the times you get additional you know, benefits and all those things to around 1,30,000. So that comes to an average of 3 lakh rupees per month. So the average salary of a graduate is 3 lakh rupees per month that's massive that's probably like the annual income of um, you know an engineer from a very normal college an average engineer and here it is per month so as you grow the salary also grows and that's why the lifestyle the standard of living is also very good and remember cars bikes mobile phones petrol everything else is cheap as compared to India over there. So it kind of makes up for it and you can easily repay your loan or if you have some kind of, uh, you know, a commitment, so you can easily cover it up once you go for a job. So those are the benefits that you get, obviously career wise. Now, if you have loved this lecture, please let me know. And what else would you like to know about UAE? Do let me know in the comments. And remember, Vedantu always has, you know, programs for all of you for you guys to get into your dream college. Well, if you want to crack JE mains, you want to crack boards, you want to crack JE advance, there are courses running for you. Make sure you use my coupon code SHHPRO or SHKVPY or SHCC so that you get the best out of all the courses which are running for you, be it for 11th, be it for 12th, be it for 10th, it works. And I would love to have you on our you know, platform as well which is very interactive and you can just study from no matter whichever place you are in. Okay, so uh, yes, you can study in IIT and you can go there for a job too. Yes, Sharad, that will be a very smart move to do. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, many companies do come in IITs and also the top-notch colleges in our country. They hire for many companies abroad, be it Singapore, be it Dubai, be it Abu Dhabi or sometimes even in US or Canada too. And they offer you the same pay package what they would offer to a graduate in their country. But that is obviously restricted to a very few. And only if you are in the top-notch IITs, top-notch NITs or top-notch government funded colleges. Yep. So uh, I hope this session was very informative for all of you. And please share this with all your friends, your relatives, your cousins. And if you still have any doubts, you can definitely ping me on my Instagram handle. And my Instagram handle is nothing but, you know, uh, I'll just put it up right for you over here. Okay, I'm not sure if it's showing. Yes, I think it's showing now. Yeah, it's stress underscore Vedantu. Um, and yeah, I will respond back to you. Okay, and anything else, please put it up in the comment section. Thank you very much and uh, have a great time. See you. And stay safe, stay well, and keep studying, keep working hard. And I'm pretty sure uh, you will reach your dream and your destination very soon. Take care. This was Captain Shea signing off. Hasta la vista.